This video is sponsored by DistroKid. They are a music distribution platform that's specifically aimed at independent artists and producers, much like myself. And so they offer many useful free promotional tools to help promote your music. The one we're gonna be talking about today is called Hyperfollow. It's essentially a link in bio link. I use it all across my social media and pretty much on every single one of my single releases. So more on that later in the video. You may or may not have heard of Mutic. It's a festival in Montreal where world-renowned artists come to perform and it's also a pretty industry heavy festival as well. Lots of live sets, lots of DJs and just like an all around fun time. They have similar Mutech festivals around the world. I believe that there's one in Japan, but Montreal is the headquarters. So during Mutech and within the grounds of Mutech, there's actually another festival, it's called Knob Sessions. And this is a synth event kind of similar to Superbooth. It was the first time ever that I attended it this year. Just to be clear, Knob Sessions is actually separate from Mutech. It's not like within the same festival, but it's organized in the same area. So with Knob Sessions, essentially the idea is different synth companies come in and showcase their gear. It's not comparable in size to Superbooth, but there were actually some companies that showed up to Knob Sessions that didn't show up to Superbooth. Uh, mainly Roland is the first one that stands out to me. And I don't think that Udo was at Superbooth, although I could be wrong on that one. I might have just missed them. So this video is just about the gear that really stood out to me at Knob Sessions. And we're gonna start with synth number one. Udo Super 6. Udo sells a full keyboard version of the Super 6. but I had the pleasure of trying out the desktop version. To me, my first impression tells me that it's a player's synth. So what do I mean by that? It feels good and it really does. It's hands-on and performative, which I'm all about. I think that what it comes down to actually making music simplicity and just like really high quality sounds is key and the Super 6 has that down pat. It's been compared to the Juno 60. It doesn't have like an insane amount of parameters to distract you from actually making cool tones and music. In terms of quality, just super high quality oscillators. I would say some of the best quality that I've heard. Personally, I actually don't have like a super high quality analog synth in my collection. So this is one that I've been checking out. But of course, with quality comes a very high price. And that's, I guess, one thing I don't like about the Super 6. <laughs> the thing about these events is that you can't legally take the piece of gear home with you. So you have just like a first impression of what it sounds like, what it feels like, what it looks like. And you only have a few minutes with a given instrument because there's like pressure from other people. They want to try it out as well. So you're relying on your first impression. Apparently there are some bugs that have been corrected, but as old bugs get corrected, new ones appear. Before you couldn't remap the mod wheel, which has been corrected with an update. There wasn't a binaural PWN until an update. So that something else that was fixed. There's no true mono output mode. So my point here is that for something that's very high quality and top shelf, if you will, you think that they have all the ins and outs worked out, but they're, fi they're, they're slowly fixing them with updates. I feel like this whole update concept is sort of a blessing and a curse with modern synth companies. It's a blessing because obviously you get updates, you get new features to these instruments, but also developers might be getting a little bit lazy and sort of like, relying on updates and just fixing things at a later time. On the other hand, gear these days is just getting so complex, so it's pretty understandable for there to be little bugs here and there, which do get fixed. I always like to think of things like in a spectrum. If you're a fan of this channel, you guys know that I love the Roland Boutiques. It's the perfect combination. I love Roland gear and I love portable gear. I've done quite a few videos on the JU06A. It's made it into maybe three of my five latest single releases. I'm also a huge fan of the TR6S, which is a groove box slash drum machine. I think it's one of the most underrated drum machines on the market. To me, the JX08 is the next potential runner up in the boutique series. I tried out the JD08 as well, which they released at the same time, I believe. As I mentioned earlier, it could just be because the JD08 has more like controls, more knobs, more faders, 
which is why I didn't really gravitate towards it given the environment. But I did gravitate towards the JX08, maybe because I used to own the JX8P, so I'm familiar with the sound and there's less controls. It seems a little bit easier to use, at least for me. The JX8P was like smack dab right in the middle of the 80s. So that's, that's the sound. Compact, not too many buttons, just the right amount of control that I like. You can get some counterpoint going with multiple voices. And honestly, I think for the purpose of this video, the best thing would be to just show you how it sounds. My buddy Dustin, who is a rep at Roland, put together this jam with the TR-8S as well as the JX-08. Fairfield Circuitry made an appearance as well, and they make some really interesting looking and sounding effects pedals. Their pedals have especially made waves in like the tapey, nostalgic kind of lo-fi realm. We've actually already collaborated together. They've sent me a few of their pedals. This one really stands out to me. So this is Shallow Water. Everyone, Everyone seems, seems to, to love this thing. I find that EQ wise, it just enhances everything. It's sort of sucks everything into the middle. So you are losing a bit of low end as well as a bit of high end, but those mids just sound so crunchy. We're gonna try it on this OP1 loop. So that's what it sounds like without it. Let's turn it on. One, two, three, and go. See how it just sucks everything in? There's also like a warble effect, which I have control of here. I can control the weight of the warble. Sorry, the rate. And there's a low pass. And at least in the niche that I'm involved in, this just seems to be a quality that everyone is interested in. Empress is another audio effects pedal company whose headquarters is like an hour away from my place. I own their Echo System, which I guess at this point can be considered an oldie. That's another pedal that just sits so well in my setup. You can run multiple effects engines in dual parallel, dual serial, or just left and right. The quality is like some of the best I've ever heard. It's just tremendous. And in many instances, I'd actually prefer the Echo System over the microcosm, which I've raved about a bunch. I've actually done a much more thorough review on it as well. Here it is. The last item here that caught my attention is not really something that I personally would buy. My studio is just way too small to support it. It's called the Tower Spring Reverb by the company Screwed Circuits. It's got like a Lord of the Rings vibe to it. It stands 36 inches tall, so about up to my hip. Definitely not something I'd recommend traveling with. It's definitely more of a studio stay put tool. Mono in, stereo out, and gated input. There's a mix for wet and dry, a compressor, an overdrive, and a gate with attack, sustain, and release on it. So plenty to work with there. Unfortunately, I was traveling light, so I only had my TX6 with me at knob sessions. So here's an example of some classic drum tones being run through the tower. Again, something that I would love to purchase, but I just can't fit it in my studio. It definitely caught my eye, which is why it's on this list. And so I thought you guys might be interested too. And speaking of eye catching, have you heard about DistroKid? So we'll talk about Hyperfollow. This one's a bit of a curveball because DistroKid is not one of those platforms that you'd be expecting to do this sort of thing for free as an extra promotional tool. You can put together a totally centralized link hub at no extra charge with some of the same features that other platforms offer for, for pay. And I'll show you what mine looks like, but first. I'm one of DistroKid's most active members, so they gave me this special discount link for you guys to use in case you're not already a DistroKid member. So go to hyperfollow.com and reserve your username. From there, you could fill out all your info. As a side note, other platforms charge specifically for ad tracking, 
DistroKid offers that for free. And so this is what the final result looks like. Latest single, latest YouTube video, social links, other important links I'd like to lead people to. It's all there and this is just one of many reasons to go with DistroKid. So obviously not quite the size and stature of Superbooth, but still I was super glad to attend this event. For someone like me and potentially you if you're watching this channel, I think it's always just interesting to see what's out there. Sometimes you see like trendy gear on YouTube, but it's not all here. There's always something you don't know about, maybe like smaller companies that are sort of just like slipping through the cracks that have great gear. And an event like Knob Sessions is just like a perfect environment to check out all these instruments. So my point, go to synth events. <laughs> if you're interested in purchasing any of the gear from this video, I've left affiliate links in the description. If you end up using those links, I actually make a small commission from that sale at no extra charge to you. So use those links, it's the best way to support what I do or one of the best ways. You could also subscribe, like this video, share this video, join my Discord, we like to shoot the shit about synth stuff. Be great to have you there. Hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you soon.